Hi boys and girls. Today we're going to make a really cool potions and elixirs box to store all of our magical ingredients for our spells. Now there are a couple of materials that we're going to need today. Your brushes, you're going to need a jar of water and a sponge from home. We have three shades of brown, yellow, black, and green with speckles in it. And then you'll have your wooden box and your owl. And lastly, in your kit is the silk screen. You're gonna keep it in the Ziploc bag until we're ready to take it out just so that we don't risk it getting wet. All right. So there are a couple of things that I do wanna go over before we get started. If you haven't already, please go wash your hands. If you have any food or hand lotion or even hand sanitizer on your hands, it could affect the way that the paint sticks to your pottery. So you wanna make sure that you wash your hands and you're not eating while you're working on this project. The other thing is that this paint will wash out of your clothes, but just to keep your area tidy, you might wanna put down a piece of newspaper or a placemat, whatever is best for you. So let's get started. We're gonna put our three colors, yellow, black, and green to the side, and we're just gonna work with our three browns to begin with. Now, I'm gonna show you this box. You can see on this box that I have painted it so that it looks like wood grain. This is a really fun technique, and I'm really excited to share with you how to do this. Now, this is a really fun technique that you can use anytime you come into the studio. Even if you're working with acrylic paint on a canvas, you can still use the same technique. So this is something that's gonna stick with you guys for a while, and hopefully you can use it in other creative projects. So we are gonna layer this box twice doing the same technique. So I'm gonna walk you through the steps to start with. So we're gonna take our lightest brown and we're going to paint every surface of the outside of this box. So the top of the lid and the sides, you don't have to worry necessarily about the bottom of it just yet. Then we're gonna get the bottom of the box, all of the sides as well. We're gonna leave the inside wet. Okay, so I did my first layer, my base coat on my box. So we're gonna move over to the medium brown. Now for this step, it's important that your brush is rinsed off, but even more importantly, that it's nice and dry because we're gonna do a technique called dry brushing. So once you have rinsed your brush off, you can dry it off on your placemat or a paper towel, but you wanna make sure that it's not runny or, or wet. All right, so the next step is going to be to add a little bit of darker brown texture to your wood grain. It's very important in this step that you're painting in the same direction. We're not gonna go up and down. We're gonna go left to right the long way. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to dip my brush that's nice and dry now into the darker brown. And starting from one corner, I'm going to 
drag my brush until it completely runs out of paint. So what's gonna start happening is that the paint's gonna start looking kind of choppy, but that's gonna give the impression of wood texture. So I'm gonna do that in a couple of different areas on this, on, the on my lid. And I'm also going to start in different spots. Flip it and pull up like that. So you can see what I mean when I say that the paint runs out and it starts getting really, really texturized on the bottom. That's what we want it to look like. And it's going to look really, really cool when it gets fired. So we're going to do that to all the sides of the base of the box. If you wanted to, you could add a little bit on the edges of the lid of the box as well. But very important, boys and girls, make sure that you're painting in one direction. If your brush is feeling like it's getting a little bit too damp from the paint, you can rinse it off and dry it off again. All right, so now it's time to add a little bit of texture detail to our wood grain. Now on your handout, you're gonna see a texture glossary that goes over a couple of different techniques that you can use. Circles, dashes, swirls, waves, jiggles. I incorporated a couple of those on my sample that I made. I also added some just regular straight lines with a couple of horizontal lines going over it. You could do that as well if you want, but it's totally up to you how this part looks. My recommendation is to add maybe two to three textures on each side, and you're not going to fill up the whole space with them. You're just going to put them in a couple of different areas. Now, one thing you can do is you can water down your darkest brown paint. So you can either use your mixing plate or you can use the lid of one of these cups to do it. This is just gonna make your paint a little bit more smooth. It's gonna help it glide a little bit better. You don't wanna add too much water, but just a little bit so that your paintbrush glides a little bit more easily on the pottery surface. You're gonna use your detail brush for this step.
All right, so I have three different colors of brown on here. And now the fun part is that we're gonna do it all again, one more time. So I'm gonna make sure that my large brush is rinsed, that it's nice and dry. And what I'm gonna do is paint right over what I've already done. Now, you can see this on my box, that some of the brown shows through anyway. This is gonna give it like a really cool layered texture. So trust me, it's gonna look amazing. So we're just gonna cover up everything we just did. We're gonna do all those steps again, but very important, we are painting everything in the same direction. And you also do not wanna do this step unless your other paint is dried first. Okay, so we're going to rinse our brush. Make sure that it's nice and dry because this is the step where we do the dry brush technique. So I'm going to find the most dry side and I'm going to add these streaks again. You should be able to see through to what you've already done. So you actually don't want to go back over your other marks. You wanna put them in different spots. Okay, and last step for this wood, we're gonna get our detail brush one more time and our darkest brown. We're gonna add a little bit of water into it and we are gonna make some texture marks again. You could do the same texture, you could do different texture, it's totally up to you, but you wanna space out where you put it. You don't wanna just go over what you've already done.
All right, so I've completed my two layers of my three different colors of brown, of my three different shades of brown. So what I'm going to do right now is I'm going to rinse my brush and I'm going to paint the inside of this with the speckled green. This is gonna allow time for the lid to dry before we put our stencil on. So you guys can do two to three coats of this green on the inside, letting it dry in between each coat. Now the easiest way to get the sides in here is just to pull your brush upwards. Okay, what I recommend to you guys right now is to wash your hands and to change the water in your jar. All right guys, so our next step is going to be to paint our little Hedwig topper. Now you can paint it just like Hedwig and I'm gonna show you how to do that. Or you can use the colors that you have to come up with your own magical owl creature. So you're gonna to wanna to use your detail brush for this project. And what you're gonna do, it's very simple. You're gonna dip the tip of your detail brush in the black paint. And you're just going to do little streaks of black paint. Teeny, 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 tiny. I'm gonna move up so you can see. Teeny, tiny on the wings. And these don't have to look perfect. but you wanna make sure that you're staggering them. They're not just in a straight line. Okay, I'm gonna put some. All right, so now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna flip them over. I'm gonna add some on the back of the wings. Kind of going onto his back and down. Okay. Now you want to be really careful at this point. This paint dries really really quick, but you don't want to smudge any of those black lines. What you can do now is paint his little beak black. And the good thing about the black is we only need to do one coat of it. But you're going to want to go really slow around this beak because this is a very small area. It's a small, delicate spot to paint. Moving his little beak out. 
great. All right, so last step is going to be using the back of your paintbrush. You're gonna dip that in the yellow and you're gonna put that right in the middle of the eye and you're kind of gonna like swirl it around a little bit. We want that dot to be a little bit bigger than if we just put the back of the brush down and left it. So you're just gonna swirl it around. All right. Oops, I got a little yellow on him, that's okay. I can wipe it off with the sponge later. Now we're gonna wait just a second for this to dry. You're gonna wipe the back of your brush off. You're gonna dip it in the black and you're just gonna make a teeny little dot right in the center. Such a quick, easy way to make eyes. There we go. And that's it. Our head wig is done. If you wanted to add some toes, you can do that. Let me give him a little talons over here, little claws. All right, and then I'm gonna put him to the side. All right, guys, this is the moment that I've been waiting for. I'm very excited to put my silk screen on top of my box, my potions box. Now, before you do this, you need to make sure that your lid is completely dry. If it's not completely dry yet, you can blow dry it for a minute or two just to make sure that it's not damp at all. but you wanna make sure that this is dry before we move forward. So at this point, what you can do is you can get your silk screen out of the Ziploc bag. We're gonna take a look at this real quick. So there are two different sides of this tissue paper, the darker black and the words are going to be backwards. And then the front of it, when you turn it over, you can read that it says potions and elixir. We're gonna to wanna to put our tissue paper with the dark black side down. And what you're gonna do is you're gonna decide where on this box your words are gonna go, but you also wanna make sure that you leave space because we're gonna, we're, when we get your projects back at the studio, we're actually gonna glue Hedwig right onto your box. So you wanna make sure that you leave enough room so that she, I just realized I was calling Hedwig a heat before. Hedwig is a she. Um, I apologize to any big Harry Potter fans. I just corrected myself. Um, but you're gonna make sure that you have enough space for her over there in the corner. So I think I'm gonna do mine a little bit tilted. I think that's pretty cool. So now what you wanna do is you wanna go get your sponge and you wanna make sure that your sponge is not too wet, not too dry. But this, we're gonna adhere this kind of like if you put a temporary tattoo on. So I have my sponge. I know it looks dirty, but it just has paint on it. And I'm going to hold it down over my tissue paper until I can tell that it is fully absorbed into the tissue paper. So I can see that the black is getting darker and the tissue paper is almost becoming a bit transparent looking. And I'm gonna press down until I've covered all the spots. If your paper is coming up a little bit, you might want to just hold it down with your fingers. Make sure that all the spots are nice and dark before you peel it up. All right, guys. So I have my potions and elixir stamp. Your paint is going to peel up a little bit. That black is not all gonna show through and that's totally fine. I like the way that this looks because to me, it gives the impression that it's really old and ancient. If you want to, to take your detail brush, you can go fill some of these areas in. And I think the only spot that I really want to do this is the ampersand. 
the ampersand is, it kind of looks like the number eight and it means end. So I'm just gonna fill that in a little bit, but otherwise I love that this looks like an old wizards or witches potions and elixirs box. All right, guys, maybe I'll just fill in right over here. And you're gonna go really slow when you do this as well. I don't wanna fill in too much because I just love how this looks like it's an outline. It's just so cool. All right. So that's it for our potions and elixirs box. Before you send this back, you wanna make sure that you write your name on the bottom of your box. You can go right over the paint with a pencil, a pen or a Sharpie, but that's it for this project. I can't wait to see how these turn out. I'm so excited and I'd love to hear in our Zoom chat what you plan on putting in your potions boxes. I hope everyone has a great day. Bye.